May we bow in prayer. Holy Father, we are so grateful for this day, for this miraculous night. There is nothing in this world that has not been created by you. We are surrounded by beautiful earthly and heavenly wonders, and you created all peoples to care for your creation and one another. Tonight, we search for that very special, exceedingly bright star that you placed in the vast sky for the lowly shepherds in the fields and the wise men from far away that guided them to Bethlehem to see where Jesus, your son, was born. The ancient prophets had been preparing many believers of this event, and yet even today, there are doubters. Our hearts ache for those who fail to understand this blessing that you have given us. We are the fortunate ones because we believe in the miracles that can only come from you. A young virgin was chosen to give birth to a baby in a most humble setting, and that child matured and walked among men and women like us. He continues to walk beside us. Jesus is a king, certainly not distinguished by fine silks and velvets or by a crown encrusted with precious jewels, but by his humanness and his teaching us how to care and love ourselves and one another. Yes, this night is very extraordinary. Lord, we truly do want to be like your son, not just at this hour, but every day of our lives. Help us be true disciples, full of grace, mercy, and truth. Show us the way to carry the light of your Son to all we meet, so that the world will be a great symbol of thankfulness, of peace, and of love for all. In the name of Jesus Christ, born this night, we pray. Amen. the coming of the light. Please join in the responsive reading that is in bold print. On this holiest of nights, we come, joining the shepherds who are stunned by wonder. On this most silent night, we come, our hopes and dreams joining those of Mary and Joseph. On this night of carols and candlelight, We come, our glad songs, joining with the choirs of angels over us.
A reading from the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon everyone. Your son your da and daughters will prophesy. The elderly will dream dreams and the young will see vision. That promise certainly came to pass as lowly shepherds encountered angelic hosts, filling them with a joyous tune, they danced all the way to Bethlehem singing. It would come to pass again many years later, as Jesus' lowly followers gazed up to heaven, wondering what might come next. And Jesus filled them with the spirit of love, and they danced all the way into Jerusalem, proclaiming the good news. Down through the ages, God's Spirit will be poured out again and again, challenging the powers and the principalities and demonstrating the truth that love will always win in the end. Just over a hundred years ago, on Christmas Eve night, that Spirit was poured out upon mortal enemies killing each other on a battlefield in Europe. German and British soldiers that night, threw down their weapons, embraced one another, and they broke bread together. They drank together. They sang Christmas carols together. Tonight, we gather for many reasons. Perhaps it's just to be with family. Perhaps it's just something we think we should do. Perhaps we just wandered in here looking for something. And yet behind all the reasons we're here tonight is that simple longing for God's love to embrace us once more, for Christ to be born again in our hearts. There is a mystery and a magic to this night that began long ago in Bethlehem when all the world was changed because of the birth of a simple child. That night when God's Spirit was poured out again on the young and the old, the poor and the oppressed, the lonely and the forgotten. It was to such as these who were there for Christ's birth. Tonight we light the Christ candle. Our circle of light is complete and unbroken. It's been a trying few years. Our weariness is great and the darkness of our land is so very deep. But tonight... I invite you to look up, see and hear the choirs of angels pouring out the spirit of love and peace once again. Listen closely, not simply to their joyous announcements, but also to the quiet whisper of God's love saying to us all, for to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. As we sit here in the light of these Christmas candles, whose flames dance to the joyous news, as we hold hands with our loved ones in the pews, or just hold our loved ones in the memories of our hearts, my hope for you this night is that your soul feels its worth. That is the promise of Christmas. That is the promise of all these lights. May we pray. Tonight we gather, longing for the mystery and magic of this night to live again in our hearts. Memories of old whisper ancient promises, and so we come, seeking hope and the promise of peace. Tonight, O oh God, may Christ be born again. Fill us with love and with grace that we too like the shepherds so long ago, may leave this place singing and dancing because we found in the manger the very worth of our souls. Bless this Christmas gathering. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, Please stand if you're up to it and join me in singing some Christmas carols.
reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, <coughs> verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light. But the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, but his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children. Born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God. The Word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God for the gift of the scriptures. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. It was a night Much like any other night There was a star That shone with wondrous heavenly light The shepherds feared the sky Until they heard the angels cry Fear not for I have good news for you. Fear not, for now your Lord is here. He'll be everything you need and more. Won't you come to him now and adore? Joseph was a man much like any other man here was his god sent son he wanted so to understand his mind began to doubt until he heard the angel shout fear not for i have good news for you Lord is here. He'll be everything you need and more. Won't you come to him now and adore? Today 
today's a day much like any other day we have our fears and doubts in much the same way but there's a longing deep within when Jesus whispers once again fear not for I have good news for you fear not for now your Lord is here he'll be everything Come to him now and adore. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. reading from Luke Gospel, chapter 2, 1 through 20. And it came to pass in those days that there should be a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all were to be taxed, everyone in, into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out to the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, be, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the time the day came accomplished that she should be delivered. And he brought her forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloth and laid her in the manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there, in the, in the same county, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord shone upon them, came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy. Good tidings of great joy, which shall be to you of all people. For to, unto you is born this day a city in the day, a, this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this and this shall be a sign to you: she, ye shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a there was an angel multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill, earth and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass that as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go into Bethlehem and see the thing that which hath come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary, Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all of these things in her heart, pondering them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things that they had heard, seen, and what 
and as it was told unto them. Thanks be to God for the gift of the scriptures. we pray. God, we gather here on this night to listen to the carols and to the story of Christmas. We gather here tonight looking for that mystery, that magic that has always captivated our hearts. We come here seeking. We seek the child. We seek your love. Come be with us. Come and touch our hearts and pour out your Spirit that Christ might be born again this Christmas night in each and every one of our hearts. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. I wanted to ask you to think back to your childhood when you were little children and you had all those great big dreams. I mean, maybe it was you were going to grow up and be a a firefighter, a police officer, a teacher. You know, I, I grew up in the 80s. I, will, I, I was dreaming of being an archaeologist. I even started wearing the hat to go with it. I always loved fedoras after watching that movie. I thought it would be grand to have run around the world breaking into temples, fighting Nazis, and just having a fun time. 
And then reality came in. Mom told me, well, you know, that takes 12 years. You could be a doctor or a lawyer instead of an archaeologist. And that kind of torched that dream. I won't even mention uh, my other dream. I don't know how many of you, when you finish the Christmas wrapping paper, you get it out and you make those sounds. That's one of my favorite movies, Star Wars. We used to dream a lot as children. Dream what the world would be like when we got older and we were in charge. We dreamed, we dreamed, and we dreamed. And then as we got older, I don't know what happened. Did life happen? Did our dreams get busted? Did we go on to fulfill any? Were they not what we were expecting? I had a dream in college. I ran off and followed a girl. And boy, did that get busted when I found out she had a criminal record a mile long. (laughs) You dream, and then life intervenes and crushes the dream, extinguishes the dream, or just makes you weary. Kids are great dreamers. We can learn a lot from them. But I think as adults, we just let the world's weariness weigh down on us. And those dreams just kind of disappear. It's been a long two years with this pandemic, with this poisonous politics that's captivating our country. I'm weary, I'm tired, and sometimes I just want to say I'm done. I never dreamed that I'd be running a broadcast booth in my church. I remember in 2019, I was was given a speech at a conference in California, and a little girl came up to me and said, oh, you need to to get into video and broadcasting. I said, oh, no, never going to do that. And then God said, yeah, you are. I never dreamed that we'd be running this massive food ministry that we have at this church. Never dream that when the pandemic started and we, everything shut down, that, that this little church would be able to do anything for anybody. And then somebody challenged us and said, if we gave you some money, what would you do with it? And I said, maybe we'd feed the people as long as we could. And we thought we'd do this for two weeks, and it's now been two years. And our motto has been, loaves and fishes. You step out and believe And God always provides. Because God looks for dreamers. People who are willing to take the leap of faith. Willing to believe in something bigger than they are. But man, it's hard at times. Especially when the world intervenes and you just get tired of it all. And you're weary. I've been reading that in the last couple of years, people are just, they're just done. They're tired. They feel like the country's going in the wrong direction. They feel like life's spinning out of control. We've been cut off from our communities, from each other, for so long that I think most of the country's going crazy. I mean, that explains a lot in my family, at least. I don't know about yours. But something's missing. This week, I was reading in the Psalms about the people of Israel, and boy, did they... They really captured my feelings, and I think the feelings of our country. They wrote this beautiful song. You know, it was shortly after they were conquered by Babylon and they were exiled. You know, they were taken off from their country and thousands of miles away into Iraq, and they sat there on the Euphrates River mourning what had happened to them. Their kingdom was destroyed. Their temple was burned, their dreams crushed, and they said, by the waters of Babylon we wept. And by the waters of Babylon we hung up our lyres and our flutes on the trees. And we just gave up. And then in another psalm, they pick up that thought again, but this time it's a bit different. They said, we dared to believe. We dared to dream again. And we were like a people who dreamed. And God did restore the fortunes of Zion. And we were able to go home. 
I don't know how many of you are familiar with ancient history, but there's only two groups of people, two ethnicities that made it out of the ancient world. Everybody else just died off, bred off, or just disappeared into the dustbin of history. But two people, two peoples hung on, and they survived down to this day. You notice there are no Assyrians, Babylonians, Romans today, but there are Roma and there are Jews. And if you know anything about these groups of people, they are dreamers. No matter what happens to them, they believe that tomorrow will dawn and they will be all right. They believe that God will be there. Think of Mary and Joseph and these shepherds. These were nobodies. The Roman Empire could, could have cared less about these peasant Jews around the shores of Galilee. These were the poor, the oppressed, the outcast, and the lonely. They were nothing. And yet they believed. And they dared to believe. And when the angels came, they dared to dream. Could this be? Could this be the moment when God is going to restore the brokenness of our lives? When He's going to put it all back together and make us one again? And Mary and Joseph, they accepted the call and they traveled to Bethlehem, this refugee couple. The shepherds got the message and they went to see. And the Magi too would go and see because all of them believed. They dreamed. They were a people that dreamed. We Americans used to be dreamers. Boy, we, we spread across the world. We built a nation because we believed in the power of our dreams. I don't know what's happened to us. I don't know why we're just throwing in the towel and giving up. Maybe it is we've just been cooped up for so long we've gone crazy. But tonight, there's a reason why you're here. And I guarantee you it's not to listen to me. You're here because this night of all nights, you hear the whisper, the ancient whisper, God's whisper. The voice in your heart saying, come. Come and see. Come all ye faithful and behold. Christ is born in Bethlehem. And because Christ is born, you can dream again. Because I hold the world in my hands. And come what may, I will restore your fortunes. I will restore your lives. I will heal your wounds and bind up your brokenness. I will give water to all who thirst and food to all who hunger. And you will never be lonely again. Come to the manger. Open your hearts and see. Every year at Christmas, people gather in sanctuaries and in churches and in homes because we want to believe that again. We want Christ to be born again in our hearts. And this is the night. I hope that tonight, when you leave here, to quote that old carol, that you will feel your soul's worth. Because when we come to the manger to break bread and to drink together, this is the moment when Christ is born again. When Christ reaches down from heaven to touch our hearts. To take away all the weariness and the heaviness and the tiredness. And to restore us to the people that we once dreamed we were. May we pray. God, on this Christmas Eve night, we come as your people because we have heard the ancient calling, calling to those who are tired and weary to come and see what has happened in a manger. 
And so we gather here tonight, God, with our families, with our friends, with maybe just our memories. But we come here looking for your love. For that is the gift of Christmas. A love so deep, so wide, that it would never let us go. A love so large, so powerful, that it spread out its arms upon a cross to embrace the world so that no one would perish, but that all could have eternal life. God, we come here with nothing, but we leave here with the gifts of heaven. Come be with us this night. Help us to dream again. Help us to believe once more. In your holy and precious night, name we pray. Amen. Tonight, I invite you to stand for our affirmation of faith. Repeat these words with me. There are ones you probably have not heard before, but will you stand? We believe in God, whose light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never overcome this love. We believe that on a night like this, long ago in Bethlehem, there was born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord who comes to give all the gifts of grace and love. We believe in the Word, who has become incarnate, our very flesh and blood, yet full of grace and truth. We believe God sends this Word not to condemn the world, but to save all who are in it. We believe in His name as Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We believe in the mystery of this night, that the Spirit descends again so that Christ may be born again in each and every heart. We believe in the kingdom of dreams that God gives to all, and we will sing the unending hymn of love and life to all people. This we surely believe. Please be seated. Tonight we end by sharing Holy Communion with one another. This meal does not belong to this church. It doesn't belong to any church. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. No matter where you come from, you're welcome at this table. We welcome you with open arms and with all of our love because that is how Christ has welcomed us. Now during this portion of the service, we have a tradition on Christmas Eve that when the elements are blessed, a bell will ring and we all stand and sing. uh, What was that hymn? Joy to the world. (laughs) This has never worked out. In my 10 years of doing this tradition, I don't know what the problem is, but we'll try again tonight because we're the people who dream in the impossible. When the shepherds came to the manger, the manger was a feeding trough. And it was there they found the child who would say to the world, I am the bread of life. I am the waters of life. Through that mystery of communion, when we break bread together and when we drink wine together, we are remembering that last supper when Jesus surrounded Himself with His followers. Take a moment to remember who they were. Simple fishermen, tax collectors, prostitutes, sinners, the least, the last, the lost. Jesus said, no, to to me, you're everything. Come to my table, eat and drink. On that night, Jesus would take the bread. Not yet. Not yet. I'll give you a signal. (laughs) I told you, never has worked. (laughs) On that night, Jesus would take the bread. He would give thanks to His Father in heaven and breaking the bread, He would give each of those at His table with these words, take and eat. This is My body that I break for you. Do this in remembrance of me so that you will know how to live as well. 
the disciples and the followers of Jesus, they pondered each of those words. They thought about everything Jesus had taught them, everything Jesus had done. And as the supper ended, Jesus wore a cup of the wine. He would bless it. And He would give it to each of them with these words. This is the cup of life that I am pouring out for you and for all for the forgiveness of your sins. I do this so that you might have life and have it abundantly. May we pray. God, we pray that you would pour out your Spirit upon us again this night. Upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they might become for us the body, the blood of Christ, His love, His Spirit, and His grace. So that we too might come to the manger and find that which we seek. We hunger, we thirst for something more in life. And we know that our hearts were created by You. And they are so large that only Your love can fill them. So God, we bring our hearts, our souls, our minds to You to this table. In all of our brokenness, we ask that you would bind up our wounds and fill us with grace upon grace, that we might believe again and that we might dream again. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. The body and the blood of Christ. Tonight, as we prepare the table, and as we get ready to come, you will have a piece of bread broken off for you and placed in your hands, and then you may take a cup from the uh, chancel. After you're done, you may leave the empty cups along the chancel rail. Tonight, I also ask you, if you would support our church. In the last two years, we have been providing people with food, In the last two years, we've given out over 45,000 meals. We are going to continue to do this until we can conquer uh, food insecurity and hunger throughout Carroll County. That's a big dream, but we believe that all things are possible with God. So I invite you, if, if you'd like to support our church in that effort, please give by placing your gifts in the gold plates here on the table. Christ has been born again. Christ is waiting for you once more. This is the night that Christmas begins. This is the night when the angels are waiting. God is waiting. Waiting to embrace you all so that you might feel your soul's worth. Please come. Thank you. 
been passed from one person to the next, Christ's love and light given to people for thousands of years, to give them hope, to give them promise, to give them dreams of a tomorrow that will be better. Tonight, I invite you to stand as we pass the light and sing Silent Night. 